All right, an x-intercept is where the graph touches the x-axis. It like logically makes sense. It's where it intercepts the x-axis. So it's where the graph touches the x-axis. So that coordinate point would be something, like you'd have some number here, comma, what? If it's on the x-axis, be something, comma, zero. Two, zero, seven, zero, negative five, zero. That's where it's gonna touch the x-axis. So since all of your points are x, y, in order to find an x-intercept, you would plug in zero for y. Plug in zero for y. So if you want the x-intercept, plug in zero for y. You couldn't plug in zero for x because then it would just be zero, right? So plug in zero for y. Now these x-intercepts, they are also called zeros. So if you get asked for the zero of the graph, it just means the x-intercept. That's just like another word for that. They're also called roots, like the root of the graph. We have a lot of words for x-intercepts, like a lot of vocabulary. And you'll do more with that in algebra too. But for right now, just x-intercept, they're also called zeros. Y-intercept. We're going to write almost the exact same stuff, but for y over here. Can you close the Chromebook? And are you guys okay back there? Okay. This is where the graph touches the y-axis. y-axis is the one that goes like this. So that coordinate point, if it touches the y-axis, it would be zero comma something, whatever you would get, zero one, zero negative three, whatever that is. And since your points are always x, y, you would plug in zero for x. Now we don't have another fancy word for y-intercepts. They're just y-intercepts. That's, that's it. This is, I don't know. We have all kinds of words for x-intercepts. X-intercepts are called zeros. They're called solutions. They're called roots. We have all these words for them. We don't have any other words for y intercept They're just y-intercepts. So we're going to practice graphing these. You just did that on your quiz. And then we're just going to write where the intercepts are, OK? Negative 9, negative 4, what quadrant would that put us in? Three down here. So go negative nine. I think the I think the grid is ten by ten. Yeah, the grid is ten by ten. So negative nine will be like one box before the edge, and then negative four. So here's your point, and your slope is two thirds. Hey guys, using words like up, down, left, and right, what does that mean? You do this is like your instructions. Oh, up to right, right. Up to <laughs> right three. Are you focusing with me over there? I will put you back here in a second if this isn't written down. You're going to go up to right three. Now, you know how I said, just keep going and fill the whole grid? Because I knew this lesson was going to happen. And if you don't keep going, you won't run into the axes and you won't be able to see what the intercepts are. So it's just a good habit to be in. Just keep going up to right three, up to right three. Just fill the whole thing. If you can count to two and count to three, you can do it. Pep talk, go team. You can do it. Just go all the way to the edge. Then you don't have to worry about how many points you're showing, just all of them. Show all of them that'll fit. Oh, I was the one who was trying. Yeah, that's good too. You can, here, I'll draw in. I don't usually draw in all the triangles, but we can draw in one. Yeah, if you draw in all the little triangles. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what slope is. Perfect. That's exactly what slope is. Now, when you write these, you have to write an ordered pair. I don't really have a better explanation than here it is. Just look at it. So you're going to have to look. All right. This is your x axis. Here's your x intercept. Where is that touching the x axis? Good. Now you have to write negative 3, comma, 0 because it's an ordered pair. And then the y-intercept, this one's your y-axis. It's right here. I don't. It's right there. I don't have a better explanation than look. Look, guys, there it is. So where is that touching the y-axis? Good. Zero, two. 
Now, when you write it, like technically the definition, when you have zero, you don't have to write it as an ordered pair. You can just put the negative three if you want. If you wrote negative three comma zero, I would mark it correct. It's all I'm testing you on is, do you know that a zero is an X intercept? Just copy over that number. That's all that that is. You do, so listen up. Let's try that again. Nine, negative eight. What quadrant is that gonna put us in? Which one? Four, good. Go to nine, the grid goes to 10, so it'll be like one before the end. And then negative eight, be two before, the, yeah, it's easier to like think the whole way is 10 and then just back it up by two. All right, and then your slope, you would go down four, right three. Look, if we go down four, right three, we're gonna be off the grid. So what can I do instead to like stay on the paper? Yeah, go up, uh, what was it? Up four. So if I go up four, then I would have to go left three, perfect. So just keep doing that. Up four, left three, up four, left three. And just fill the whole thing. It's not like, I'm not asking you for a hundred million points. Just, it's a 10 by 10 grid. Work with me. And then we're just going to look at it and write the answers. Here's your x-intercept. Look, there it is, is my explanation. Where does that touch the x-axis? And you would have to write three, zero. Perfect. Three comma zero. And then if you want to write that on the line for zeros as well, it's the same answer. Like, I'm literally just checking, do you know that those mean the same thing? It's like a gimme answer. And then where does the graph touch the y-axis? Good. Zero, four. Perfect. Hanging in there, you doing okay? I told you it was sugar this morning, so we should all be like super awake. No. Oh, this slope is zero. What is that gonna look like then? Yeah. Horizontal. Horizontal, okay. And, then and we're gonna go through, I know I did one of each, right? And then we're gonna go through this point. So go ahead and plot four negative one. It'll be in the fourth quadrant. So four negative one will be right there. And then you're just gonna draw a horizontal line through it. So where does that graph touch the x-axis? It doesn't. So you would just put none or NA or a frowny face, or I don't care, make up something silly that I encourage you to be silly. That means none, but you can't leave the line blank because then I don't know if you understand it was none or if you just didn't answer the question. Where else can I put none then? Yeah, on zero or NA or there aren't any, I don't know, right? not applicable that's what na is all right now y intercept where does this graph touch the y-axis one zero negative one good all right undefined that's going to be a vertical line we want to go through two six that's in the first quadrant so go ahead and plot that two six and then draw a vertical line So where is that touching the x-axis? Two, zero. zero, good. And you can go ahead and put two on the line for zeros. You can put two comma zero, I don't care. For zeros, you can just put the number. And then where does it touch the y-axis? It doesn't. Yeah, so you can put none or NA or frowny face or something that indicates that there isn't an answer for it. I, I encourage people to be silly, and then sometimes my pre-calc kids, when there's a none, they'll write like something funny. Makes me laugh. All right, now we're going to do this given the equation. Watch. For x-intercept, you're going to plug in zero for y. It should be something zero, and I like to just cover it up. Watch. 
If y is zero, it's gone. Do you see that? You have two x equals negative 10. What would x be? Okay, let's write it down. Off to the side here. If you have two x equals negative 10, if we plug in zero for y, you get two x equals negative 10. What would you do to solve that? You divide by two. Good, I heard somebody say it over here. What is it? It'll be negative five. Good. And then you can write that on the line for zero as well. Now for the y-intercept, you're gonna plug in zero for x. So again, I usually just cover it up. Like if it's zero, it's gone, right? So look it, I'm just gonna cover up the two x. You have five y equals negative 10. And you would divide by five and you would get negative two, perfect. When you go to graph it, all you're gonna do is plot those two points and connect them. It's all you gotta do, all right? Negative five, zero will be right here. Can you guys see that? Negative five, zero. And then zero, negative two will be right here. And then just connect them. If you want to figure out what the slope is and keep it going, that's fine. But this lesson is on intercepts. So as long as you have the intercepts correct, you're good. Your homework on delta math, like you just slide them to the correct place. That's all you got to do. Let's try it again. X intercept, you're going to plug in zero for Y. Just cover it up. Look it. If I cover up Y, it's gone. You have seven X equals negative 14. So what will that give us? Negative two. negative two, perfect. And then you can put negative two here. You can get quick at these if you just cover them up. All right, Y intercept, you're gonna plug in zero for X. Watch, just watch. I'm gonna cover it up. You get negative two Y equals negative 14. Seven. Good. Why is it positive seven? Because you divide by negative. Yep, negatives cancel out. All right, you're gonna plot those, connect them. Here's negative two, zero. You okay? Okay. You're, I told you no dying. I told you this. <laughs> no dying. All right, negative two, zero, and zero, seven, and then connect them. Again, if you wanted to like do the slope and draw the little triangle and find more points, you can, but this lesson is on intercepts. So as long as you have the intercepts, we're good. You're gonna totally be okay. I really promise. All right, X intercept, you would plug in zero for Y. There's not a Y in the equation. Do you see that? That means like it's already, it's already gone. So just solve that. What would you do to solve this equation? Subtract four, very good. Subtract four, that would give you two X equals 12. Good. Divide by two, X is six. There isn't a y-intercept. There's not even a y in the problem, so there can't be. Well, we did get an x-intercept. It's six, zero. So go ahead and plot that. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be right there. But if there's not a y in the problem, if there's not a y-intercept, how will we draw in the line? Not horizontal, but vertical. If I draw it vertical, do you see how it won't touch? The y axis. So if you get an equation that's missing an x or a y, it's going to be a vertical or horizontal line. What's that? Your x would be zero for y. Well, let's do this one and I'll show you what it looks like the other way. Do you see how there's not an x in the problem at all? It's just none. And then I can also put none for zero. They're the same answer. For your y-intercept, you're just going to solve this. What would you do to both sides? You divide by negative three, and you would get 
three. So zero, three. So you would plot zero, three, and if it's not gonna have an x-intercept, how would you have to draw the line? You don't want it to touch it. Horizontal, it's gonna go like this, and it just won't touch x at all. I told you you were gonna be okay. These are nice and quick if you stay quiet and pay attention, which you guys do, it's awesome. All right, now we're back to both having an X and a Y. All right, X intercept, you're gonna plug in zero for Y. Just watch, I'll cover it up. If you cover up Y, you're left with two X equals six. So what is our answer? We, three. For your Y intercept, you're gonna plug in zero for X. So this one, if I cover that up, that's gone, you would have zero equals three Y plus six. And then you would have to actually work that out. That one you probably wouldn't do in your head. Like you'd have to actually solve it. What would you do to both sides? Not subtract. Good, subtract six. What is it? Negative two, perfect. You will plot those two points and connect them. Whoa. All right, so three zeros right here. Zero, negative two is right here. And again, you could figure out, actually, what is that slope? Let me go ahead and throw that question out. Up to uh, right three, you would go up to right three. You could keep on going, but for this lesson, we're just focusing on intercepts, so that's good. All right, last one. How do you get the x intercept? How do you get an x intercept? After all these examples, how have we been getting the x intercept? Cover up y. Put in zero for y. So, hey guys, are you with me back there? You would have zero equals two x plus 10 and you would have to actually solve that. So what would you do to both sides? Minus 10. So you get negative 10 equals two x. So it'll be negative five. And then you can put negative five here too. How do you get the y-intercept? Cover up x. Zero for x. Look it. If I cover up x, you get five y equals 10. It'll be two. And then you're going to plot those and connect them. <laughs> 